What's going on, everybody? It's Trey from Troob Talks here with episode number four of the Treeb Talked With podcast. And today's guest is a guy that is probably the most confusing guy on the planet. Because if you know him, you think you know him. But you're not like 100% sure that he's a real person or if he's a figment of your imagination. And the fact that I'm going to have him here in audio form trips me out because I'm scared of the fact that when we play this back, there's actually going to be no one else talking in the background and it's just going to be me. Kane is known for a lot of things here locally in the Valley. We're going to talk about that. And uh, he's known for being a clout god as well. You might have stumbled upon some of his pictures that went viral. He knows how to go viral. He knows how to get the people talking and he knows almost exactly what to do on the internet. We sit down, we talk about what it's like to be a clout god. We talk about how people don't even think he's a human, and we play a couple of games as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the episode four Trib Talks with guests. Trying to get hey, that eighth badge, eighth badge, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gon' end up in that Maybach, Maybach speed racer on that racetrack, racetrack. I'm just trying to get that eighth badge, eighth badge, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gon' end up in that Maybach, Maybach speed racer on that racetrack. This is probably, I don't get, I haven't had a solid, like, actual guest request on the Treeb Talks With podcast, but I feel like if I was getting requests, you'd be the number one request. So I'm happy to have you in the building, Kane. How are you doing? Good, you, and thank you. I'm doing fantastic, and like I said in the beginning, I'm hoping that your audio catches. I'm hoping you're real. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, like, have you ever seen that thing where it's like, Everybody has seen this man in their dream, and it's a picture of this dude. I feel like that's how you are with people. Everybody's like, I've seen him, but I don't know if he's real. What do you What do you have to say to the people that <clears throat> think you're not a real person? I don't. I don't really know where that started from. <laughs> I don't really get it, but I mean, I mean, I, I don't really understand it, but <laughs> I can't really speak on it. I think. I think the 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 part is is that like, I think so many people haven't met you like face to face yeah and you're just known for having like all this facebook clout and knowing how to like you know work facebook i always i always kind of look up to you in that aspect because i mean my job in real life is to get facebook engagements and you seem to know that better than anybody what uh is that just based off of you know because a lot of your shit shock value i won't lie yeah but uh what what gets you what do you think it is about your post and your stuff that gets so many people talking I mean, if I had to think about it and put an answer to it, it'd be like, you post something that is not hobby-based. So, for example, you got your car people. Yeah. You got people that only think and talk and breathe cars, okay? Then you got people that do hunting. Then you got people that do sports. There's always that common ground between everybody that will spark interest. Mm. So, like, not everybody's into fish. Oh god, I but like, know what the story is. Exactly, yeah. but nobody's into fish, but like when you get a picture and it's like a record breaking fish, it's in your city, everybody in the city's gonna like like, Oh my gosh, look at this thing. It wasn't actually here. I never claimed it was here. Long story. But <clears throat> you know, everybody's able to look at that picture and be like, Holy and then kinda share it with the rest of the people. You know, you get a share that's that's plus one clout token. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like enough people do it then you'll be recognized for continuously making posts like that but that's want, the way i look at it i want to go back to that sturgeon post because that's i i think that's probably the post that started getting your clout really going and i'm gonna have a picture of it right <laughs> here so this is the the sturgeon picture that you shared on facebook what what made you want to share this picture and how did it kind of get to the point where everyone thought that this was like a Lewiston thing. Um, okay, so I was just sitting there in bed one day and thinking, I'm like, okay, I've, th there's one reason I don't like going deep in the river. Just like swimming in the middle of the river just terrifies me. I can go on the beach and stuff, that's fine. But in the middle of the river, that's terrifying. Don't want to do it, don't want to think about it. Just because, A, how deep it is, how deep it can get. I don't think it's as deep as most rivers are, but... The fact that there's, you know, fish that big. I don't care if they're <laughs> bottom feeders. I don't care. If I'm swimming down there and I see a 10-foot fish, 
I'm probably fainting and dying underwater. I swear to God. You're scared of a 10-foot fish? Dude, like, just a fish? It's, like, the idea of it, because, like, it's so much bigger than me. I so, like, it. I know they're not going to attack me, but, like, I'm just thinking worst-case scenario. <laughs> I, I encounter the one sturgeon that does attack me type stuff. Kane, you're the type of person that would get swallowed by a sturgeon. Like, that's how you'd... you'd I'm su one thing I'm very <laughs> surprised that you haven't done yet is fake your own death and, like, do it via sturgeon eating. That's next on your agenda, isn't it? I mean, I think it, that's so... That'd be such a hard thing to get away with. <laughs> yeah. That'd yeah. be so hard <laughs> to just get away with that. But along with the sturgeon thing... Um, I was thinking about how I don't like those fish. Okay, well, I got a picture off Google Images. I just typed in giant sturgeon. Well, I found a good picture that was near a bridge. It was like near a cement pillar, I think. I think it was. You could see its spine come out of the water and then the tail. It was just, it was just huge. This is a huge fish. Um, posted the picture with the caption, this is why I don't go in the river. And then um, one of our governors shared it. I don't know, you know, the ordinary people... That saw on their feed shared it because, like, they want to be like, this is where we go in the river because, like, they want to see stuff like that because they're just, that's just, you know, how that's they what act. they do, yeah. yeah. Like, Justin Sturbaum type of dude that would go in the water yeah. and swim with them, like, purposefully for hours on end like he does that daily. So it's like, there's people like that. So, you know, he'll share it and then, you know, governor shares it and then I'm like, okay, okay, this is cool. You know, shares building up. And it just sparks that common, that common ground between everybody. And I didn't really predict that was going to happen, but. <laughs> it did, so I'll take it. How many how many total shares did that get? Do you remember? Shoot, like five k. I think it was only like five k. Five k. I I would have thought it was more than that. I think. It, I mean, I was seeing people that like. Okay, it was going more than that, and I deleted it once the magazine page shared it. There's a magazine page that shared it. There's a Facebook page called Only in Idaho. I think it's got like a hundred k likes on there. Hundred k. Oh, Only whatever. in Idaho. Yeah, yeah. I've, sh I've shared some of their stuff too. Yeah. Well, they. Part of the reason I just straight up deleted the post, they copied my, like, they shared my post, or whatever. Picture taken by Kane Tippett in Lewiston, Idaho. Oh, no. So then everybody's like, oh, Kane said that this was here in the valley. No, it wasn't. And I got so much flack for it, just like in public. People would talk to me about it, and I don't even know who these people are. I'll go on Walmart. They'll, like, ask me, are you Kane? I'm like, I don't know you. And then they'll have a full on conversation with me, like, I know them, or I know what they're talking, I know what they're talking about. I don't get it. Well, <laughs> I think, I think that goes hand in hand with. The weird thing with you is you are a complete anomaly. Like, you are a person that people think is not a real person, and then when they see you in real life, they realize that you're a real person. They realize that those face and finger tattoos are actual person. You look at your Facebook page, and, and your profile pictures are usually hilarious. They're usually, you know, pretty funny. So And, <laughs> yeah. like, people that usually have those profile <clears throat> pictures are just, like, troll pages. So I yeah. think, like... I think that goes along with people thinking you're not a real person. It's just making people laugh. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> as much as you can. I think that goes along with clout, too. you got to make people laugh. Yeah. Was it always your ambition to be this clout god, or did it just kind of happen overnight? I mean, everybody likes to have, you know, a little bit of fame here and there. You know, everybody thinks about what it'd be like. And, like, everybody wants to, you know, experience it, but... I mean, once you know, once the ball got rolling, I mean, it wasn't anything I was going to stop doing. I'm like, why? Why would I stop? There's no negative about it. <laughs> There's nothing negative about it at all. So, I mean, until you get to like a world level fame, yeah. That I mean, like you know, a rapper or like you know, movie, you know, like movie star. Until you get to that fame, it's like maybe that's overwhelming, but like just in your local area, it's a little fun. It can be fun at times. Would you say that you're a local legend in these parts? I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that, but I would say if you if you walked up to ten people in the LC Valley and asked them, "Have you seen Kane's post on this?" If that's ever came up in a like, if ten people, if you asked ten people that, "Have you ever said, did you see Kane's post on this?" I bet you ten people have said will say that they've said that. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I agree with that. Probably. So you know, you talk about this cloud that you get. You know, originally. Did it, was the original thing that really got you rolling, was it the fish picture, yeah, you think? Yeah, completely the fish. First, fish was the first thing that ever got above 1K. The fish picture was, you know, the first thing that kind of got you rolling. Now, how many people try to try to bum off your clout? How many people um, often ask you to, you know, and it could be, let's go with people that you don't associate with. I know that there's some people you do associate with that you share their stuff. And there's, yeah, I mean, re like, really, there's, I only, okay, 
there's a lot of people that just ask me to post stuff, and I have to kind of dodge it. Yeah. You know, I don't want to straight up say no. I have to kind of like dodge it because if I just posted everything everybody told me to, my timeline would be so dirty. I don't even share anything. I just share it for a day and then delete the post. Because, you know, you got people that are going to my page and then actually looking for a specific posts. If I just kept, you know, shit sharing all day posts, they wouldn't be able to find what they're looking for. So, um, I got to like micromanage what I'm posting. I got to like it. You know, if it's a song from somebody, I have to like the song. I don't want to post something that I know people aren't going to like. Like, come on. That's just bad for everybody. Um, but, like, it's, like, Dak stuff. Yeah. You know, once I, like, heard his music, you know, best artist here, you know, in this town. By far. I mean, you got David, too, but, like, Dave and Dak are two different sounds. You and know? Dave kind of, I mean, David kind of went on and did his own yeah. thing somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, I like Dak's image, and I like what he produced. I like what everything he did. So, it's, like, everybody else did, too. You know, everybody else here liked his stuff, too. So, like, me posting his stuff was, A... It, you know, everybody saw my name when I was posting his stuff, but he was getting that publicity on his videos, so it was like a hand-in-hand. Hand. It's kind of like a partnership. Yeah, thing. it was yeah. like a, here, you get this clout, I get this clout, you know, everybody's going to talk about it, and it's like, and then it turned into like a Nick Robinson deal, fix it, for example. Mm -hmm. you got I was going to ask you about that. Exactly, yeah. so then, you know, when I you get something that big that happens, and you get, you know, everybody talking about your name, you know, again for a week or two, it's just that publicity that's good you know any publicity is good publicity so you know but i still gotta <laughs> still gotta micro feed through people's post requests i get a lot for some reason I, it's it's completely based on like people knowing who you are in the post that you that you get what's the weirdest thing somebody's asked you to post have you ever got any requests to share somebody's like premium snapchat to like get some ads for that or anything like that they're Actually, it hasn't been anything weird. The weirdest thing to, you know, be requested to post would just be, like, sharing a link. Like, that's, I don't know, sharing, just sharing links to me is just weird. I don't know, like... It's like links to songs, or like Like, what? I don't know. I don't know how, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to put that into words. Just links. People, when they ask me to share a link, it's just weird. That's the weirdest thing, like, that's the weirdest it's got. <laughs> and that might not even be weird, so I don't know. How many people reach out to you that you don't know to post their shit? Mm, this, I'd probably be able to answer this question better if it was in the, when I posted that, music days, you know? Yeah. I haven't done that in a minute. Um, there's been probably several people that have messaged me just to do stuff that I just completely forget about. Just, mm -hmm. just, there's so much things that you just do that you forget about. So, I mean, I'm sure a bunch, but off the top of my head, I can't think. So I want to go back to kind of Dak, and Dak's somebody that I want to have on this podcast, so yeah. if you can reach out to Dak, yeah. too, I'd, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to have you and Dak on here. David Shawty, I know he's a little bit too out of my league these <laughs> days to be on the podcast, I'd like to have him on, too, but yeah. when did when did that relationship start? Because I've seen you guys, you started sharing his music, I don't know, like, the story <laughs> between y'all, I didn't know if you guys were connected prior to that, uh, but, you know, kind of explain so, your guys' relationship and how this got started. So, um, Dak was making music, you know, in the Valley. Everybody knows, knew of him, you know, he was posting Facebook here and there, making music, everybody knew his, his stuff because he was good. Um, when he dropped the video, um, Underrated, where he did it in the valley, um, I, I, I reached out to him, and this was after the fight videos, so yeah. I still had that token. Yeah, yeah, um, we'll get to that in a little bit, yeah. I reached out to him to post that video on my Facebook, instead of just sharing the links, because that's all he wanted to do. He didn't actually post the video on Facebook, which is just another social media to get known on. Exactly. He didn't do that. He just shared a link to his YouTube, which I'm. Mean, it's not bad because that video got like 50k on YouTube. He did not do bad on that at all. Um, but I reached out to him to actually just post the actual video because all my other videos had been very successful, very successful, and it was not going to be bad for him at all because what is he losing? He's just getting views on another platform. Mm -hmm. That's not bad for anybody, especially being local and you yeah. know people that might not know him. So yeah, yeah exactly. That, yeah. <clears throat> Facebook Facebook sharing is like the best social media tool that has ever been made sharing like instagram feed you're going one post by one post you mm -hmm. see one post and it's gone you know sharing you one person shares it and that's on everybody's feed again it's all over like sharing is just like a virus dude it's the share button is a virus <laughs> that's you know and like i said working in facebook social media i've noticed that a lot you know you you, you get like 20 shares on a post that's gonna boost that post yeah. engagement mm -hmm. the reach like uh, facebook shares definitely up there i think 
either that or, you know, posting on, like, your Instagram story when people are giving stuff away. But, yeah. I mean, even then, that's still kind of... I don't know if that competes with Facebook <clears> sharing. <throat> but, uh, yeah, just keep going on how you and Dak kind of met up. Dak, yeah, so I... Okay, I reached out to him to post that video. Um, again, this is when he was just sharing links. For whatever reason, he decided to do that. Okay, well, he said no. I didn't know him at all. I never met him, never talked to him. I just reached out to him to post it. He said no. <clears throat> That's on him. Whatever. Okay. He starts making more music. I still like it. I'm still engaged in it. Everybody around him in the valley is still engaged in it. They like hearing his music. Okay. Well, he drops another song that I really like. And I'm like, hey, I can put a visual. I'll make a visual to put over the song. And I'll post it on my Facebook. And we can see how well it goes. He says, okay, I do it. I post it. Forgot what song it was. But I don't think any one of his songs on my Facebook has gone... Is under 5K. So... Um... He saw that it, you know, I think this first one got like seven to ten k. I did, yeah. I think, just seven to ten k. His first song, um, hundreds of likes, you know, a couple hundred shares, hundred comments, and he's like, "Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually getting feedback from this on another thing, and I'm not just getting, you know, YouTube views, okay?" Um, so we met, um, started making more visuals, started posting more, became better friends. Everything evolved. Um, he moved away. So that kind of took a pause because he moved to Spokane. Um, and then, you know, once I got known for after the fights, uh, music stuff, that's when everybody else started rolling in with their music. Because, you know, none of these people made music when me and Dak were posting those videos. Nobody yeah, made music. It exactly. was literally just Dak and David making music in the valley. That was it. I want to say I was it. probably the first rapper. Yeah. Young Tricks, dude. Seventh grade, bro. Flow of the free. You? Yeah, dude. I mean, I remember that. Rap yeah, no, that was so bad. Though. I remember that phase, but <laughs> yeah. like, I never, I never blew up or anything. I got bullied at school. <laughs> now, <laughs> if I had, if I had Kane, Kane's clout backing me up, maybe I would have. But then again, you can use Kane's clout for bad reasons too. And you talked about earlier how you said you don't like to share things you don't like with this Nick yeah. Nick <clears throat> stuff. Um, was there like something personal there, or did you just share it because you're like, this is hilarious? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sitting in my house in Julieta. I'm working at Amazon for the time. I'm at my house. I'm sitting there. I'm in the middle of a call with a customer, and I look at my phone and I get a notification because I had them follow on SoundCloud that you know they posted a song. And I never do this. I never just take time out of my day to go look at something because they're you know they're just bottom of the barrel people. They're just nothing. Nobody I would pay attention to. Well, for some reason, I go and look at their song, and I listen to the whole thing for some reason, like the whole thing from start to finish, which I never would have done any other day. <laughs> and um, beginning of the song, I'm kind of mid beginning middle, I hear them diss me for whatever reason. That's um, so weird. Never that's, said a word to them. That's so weird. Like you, and that's so funny too. It was something that you didn't even want to really listen to. You just decided I, to just do it, and then they diss you in yeah. the song. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even sure if anybody would have listened to it to tell me that. Yeah. So I don't know if I would have even found out about it. But, uh, so they do that. And then I get Dak onto it. I'm like, hey, I, this has happened. Um, I'm not a rapper, so I'm not going to make a disc back. I'm not going to make a song. I'm not. Well, well, I think, I think the, uh, I could be wrong, but I think the disc came after the fact, you shared Nick's music video on your Facebook. That's right. I think, yeah, because oh that's, that, that's what I wanted to ask okay. you first. Yeah, I did do that, but, like, when I... Okay, so that, that that's what was weird about it, was that there was such a large time frame between the two. I did share his music video, and it was so bad. Yeah, well, that's what I was asking. Because, like, cause like oh. that's what I was asking originally. It's like how you said you usually don't share things you don't care about or you don't like. I what, forgot about that. <laughs> what made you... Did you just share it because it was so bad, or did you share it because you, like, you didn't like the kid? Or what was the story behind that? Well, I knew there wasn't going to be anything negative behind yeah. it. And I'm not going to get bullied for sharing it. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> yeah. So, it was just so bad. And I just knew it was such a laughing point. And... You got those ha ha reacting. Yeah, pages. exactly. Yeah. So I post it, and then people are just laughing, just sharing, like, look at this guy. They're making a fool of themselves. You know, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not that, I mean, I, not that I didn't like it. Like, it was still a video, so I posted it, but I, it, it, like, it benefited me to yeah. do it. And I kind of foresaw that. So I went, I went ahead with it, and it worked out. So Nick didn't reach out to you <clears throat> to post that music video. No. You just found it. Oh, no. He told me many times to delete that. <laughs> many times. Well, it's like, why are you putting this out if you want? And Kane's getting you all this clout. And maybe. Yeah. And, and we talked about this earlier. You said, like, even negative 
Cloud is still Clout, and it's like you're getting all this views that you wouldn't have got if yeah. Kane didn't share it, and you're out here complaining. If I was a rapper and the, and I had a choice between starting my career off with with beef that I'm losing, or I'm I'm starting from ground zero, I'm choosing beef that I'm losing because then people are actually talking about me. Yeah. I'm, people are still you know engaging with my name. They're saying my name with their mouth, so I'm going to benefit on that, even if I get you know dissed on a little bit. Yeah, I mean, and even then, like like you said, people are saying your name, and there's going to be, like, a small percentage of people that will associate with you just to go against the crowd and say, like, I like those guys' music. Those yeah. are pretty good music <clears throat> for you. Um, so then going back to when uh, you found that diss song, uh, tell, us more on, tell us more, like, what happened after that. So I was like, hey, Dak, look at this. And this is in the middle of me and Dak posting videos. Like, we're in the middle of... It's partnership. Yeah, yeah. We're we're solid. We're, we built a foundation. Um, I tell him about it, and he's like, "Okay, I I got something for them, because I'm not gonna make a song. So there's no really way I can, you know, you know, re have a rebuttal to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than just make a you know another soy boy post about it. But like, this is a little different. This is cool. You know, it's just nothing that just because the rap scene hadn't kicked off yet. Like it did mm -hmm. with them, but like no diss. There was no beef yet." Nobody yeah. was beefing each other yet, mm -hmm. and this is like what kicked it all off. And I mean, still there hasn't been beef really, really since, but it just still hadn't happened yet. So it was something for people to talk about. Well, I told Dak he made this song, and then he made it in like twenty minutes. <laughs> That's what I remember. I remember hearing about that. Lance yeah. Rodel made the beat in ten minutes. Dak wrote it and rapped it in ten minutes. Song was done in twenty minutes. Simple as that. Okay, I've just he sent it to me. Made the visual for it. Just put a picture of my brother over it. Yeah, yeah, first I remember picture that too. I seen, First picture file I seen on my computer, I used. I didn't care. I wanted this song out. Because, it, you know, it was fire. And it was funny. <clears throat> and then made that video. Posted that. And that blew up again. Just all it did was add publicity. Just adding fire to the flame. Did uh, did Nick have a rebuttal to that? I don't ever remember seeing it. They did. Um, Ethan Guzman did. Oh. oh Ethan Guzman yeah. made another diss. But... <laughs> He got, like, I didn't even have to post his video. In his own comments on his post for, with his disc, because he posted it on Facebook, he just got rolled. Just, just steamed. Just steamrolled. Oh, my gosh. He just got grilled in his own comments on his own post, so he ended up deleting that. <laughs> Dak made another disc because he, Ethan hadn't deleted this post yet, so Dak made another disc. It was even harder. I posted it, and this was, like, the next day, so everybody was still talking about it, so it was still hot. It still went viral again. Um, so just yet another token. Easy as that. Something I want to, you know, kind of provide for this podcast. Uh, I like to have local people on here. I did have a guy from, he's from Atlanta, based out of Jacksonville. I had him on last last podcast, but uh, I watch that. Yeah, I'd like to have, you know, a lot more local guys on mm -hmm. here. And uh, you know, you and Dak and, and David, kind like I mean, no disrespect to David. I like David a lot, and he's actually was like a really good friend of mine in seventh grade. But mm -hmm. I feel like he wasn't as instrumental to kind of building somewhat of a rap scene in the Valley. Yeah, I feel he, like... he was, like, big on the internet. Not in the Valley, though. Yeah, Like, people knew him and knew how big he was online, but he, he, was, he is odd. It's an odd, that's an odd, like, scenario that he was in. I don't know. I just feel like Dak wasn't as big as David at the time, but more people physically talked about Dak here than David. Yeah. And... I'm sure more people online talked about David more than they talked about Dak. So, but, I mean, if we're seeing it with our own eyes, we're going to talk about Dak more just because we're hearing it more. So, um, I can't really explain David. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a weird one. But, again, I, I, like, I like David a lot. He's yeah. definitely, you know, he's a good guy. But, uh, you know, Dak was kind of the first guy in the Valley to really, you know, set off this, this rap wave. And, yeah. and you see a lot more people now in the valley rapping and i'd like to see yeah you know, and i'd like to have some rappers on here uh to talk about it but um what what was that movement you know what caused more people to start rapping do you think it was the partnership between you and dak or what do you think you know explain the rise it's the fact that the scene being able to grow the way it was is like okay you see actual rappers blowing up you know like Lil Nas X, he made one song. Yeah. One song, and dude never has to work a job in his life exactly. ever again. He Big is facts. done. His life is is just done. Like he's he can sit in his house for the rest of his life and have as much fun as he wants from mm -hmm. one song. 
you know, he's making more songs, obviously he's getting more money from it, but he made one singular song, and it was able to make it so he didn't have to work ever again, or worry about anything ever. I mean, who doesn't want that? Exactly. That can happen to any any person. Me and Taryn were looking at uh, some YouTube videos DMing rappers' features. A Slim Jesus feature is $750. Imagine nobody rapping, or somebody that has, you know, rapped before, drops a song here with Slim Jesus in it. That's gonna if, get, I, yeah. if I seen that, I'm hopping all over that. I'm begging them to post that. I'm begging them to post that. On my knees, I'll drive to their house and beg them to post that. Just because that's, hey, that's cool. That's Slim Jesus right there. He has yeah. a 100 million song yeah. on YouTube. But it's just, ugh. You know what's funny is, this, speaking of Slim Jesus, he, he had a... Uh, he had a concert in Walla Walla, and, <laughs> really? and, 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 and like our sophomore year, and I remember me and Colton were going to go to it. We didn't end up going to it, but the, the major catch of that concert was they were giving out free tamales. So you basically got free tamales <laughs> in a Slim Jesus concert. So that was, that was, you know, that was, that was definitely cool. But, uh, you know, what, why do you think all these rappers are now kind of coming out the last one, two years? Do you think, you know, you and Dak have an influence on that, or do you think it's just, you know, the ever-growing rap genre? I think that I think them having other people to look at as a bigger artist, they have a okay, so that can be a role model for everybody else, for example. I'm mm -hmm. not saying to you guys, but I'm, for example, mm -hmm. if Dak's a role model to all these other rappers that came out recently, um, they're looking at it like, oh, he's making music, people know, are knowing him for it, and nothing bad's coming of it. Why don't I do that? So they're doing it. And, and it's kind of working out for some people, some people it's not. Um, there's two exceptions to that. Nick and Ethan, they got rolled. <laughs> that is, that's the only people that I've seen that just started a rap career or a music career and then just, it ended like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, they started and then ended like that. That, But, who, I mean, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want a little bit of fame? Who doesn't want, you know, I mean, plus making music probably sounds a little bit cool, so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then, uh, obviously, you know, you're that platform that people go to to share their music, share their rap yeah. videos, making <clears throat> visuals too. We'll get into that a little bit because I know that that's kind of like your new hustle now. Um, did you ever think about rap? Did you ever think about I think about it, but I'm like, I just never do it. What, what's, holding, what's holding you back personally from rapping? Because like, you're involved in the rap like community yeah. in the Valley. And like, and like for people listening to this that aren't in the Valley, I'm not saying that we have like the second coming of Atlanta <laughs> by any means necessary, but yeah. the fact that we have like any community of people that want to rap in the valley is incredible and mm -hmm. you're a big part of that um what's holding you back from deciding to step on the track well a the fact that it's so saturated like on a local level there's so many people that's doing it and on a world level there's so many rappers rap music is so saturated mm -hmm. i don't see i don't see like let, let's hop back to 2016 when you know that 2016 xxl cypher with lil yachty and lil Vert yeah. and denzel and 21 and kodak that was when, you know, that era of rap music came out. They started that. That that year, 2016, is when that new kind of genre split off of, you know, lyrical rap. Yeah. That, what people call mumble rap, which I just call lit music because I don't really, you know, I'm not going to call it mumble rap. But um, 2016 is like when, hey, rap, rap is something that anybody can do and blow up at. Now in 2020... I, it's still, that's still a possibility, but it's so much more saturated. Like, you look at the amount of rappers now versus four years ago, just <laughs> yeah. not even a competition. There's so much more. There's so many more people out there, and it's just it's just that much harder. With every new rapper that comes out, every new rapper that comes out in the world, every new rapper that comes out local, it's that much harder to make your name out. So it's kind of already filled. And hearing myself on, on a beat <laughs> would just be weird <laughs> to myself. Have you tried it? No, never no, tried it. You never even tried mm -hmm. it, huh? Um, so just for the local people that are listening, uh, who are some local artists to keep your eye on? Who are some guys that, you know, you've, you've worked with that you think are very talented, uh, and, you know, could actually you know, maybe make it out one day, or at least you should listen to on a local level. Okay. Assuming everybody had equipment. Shoot. I don't even know who I'm going to spotlight about that. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many people. One um, guy I want to personally shout out is a guy that I've known for a long time. And that's Justice. I like him a lot. Um, yeah. I, th I think, you know, he's limited with the things that he has, but I think uh, as far as pure skill goes, out of these local rappers, he's one of the best that I've heard. So, you know, I always, I always like supporting him. Is there anybody else that you yeah. can... Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not just saying this guy because I'm not trying to, like, cloud him under you. I'm not saying anybody's under him or anything, but um, I'm not even sure how to say his last name. 
Um, but Joey, Nieves or Neves? I don't oh, know how to oh, say I've it. Oh, heard, I've, heard, I've heard of him, yeah. That guy, I haven't talked to him ever. Never have seen him. Never talked to him. But I've heard a lot of his music, and that is it's gas. It yeah. is so good. His flows on the beat is perfect. He's very symmetrical with how he makes music. Um, and I know he did it in the past with Dak a bunch. But really? that stopped for a good chunk of time. Like, he didn't do anything with that for a good chunk of time. And, you know, he's resurfacing again, just like everybody else is. But you know, he already has a kind of like a name for himself because he's already done it in the past and he has practice. So he shoots out with everybody else, but he's so much better than everybody that, like, any song that he's featured in or any song that he is in with a group of people, he's the highlight of the song every time. So I'm I'm watching out for that guy. Yeah, there's there's a lot of local artists, and again, like don't if you're listening to this, you are a local rap artist, and Kane didn't say your name or I didn't say your name. Don't look at that like we're dissing you. These are just you know guys that we're coming up with. Yeah. And, and like mm-hmm. I said, it's a beautiful thing, you know, being a guy that liked rap, you know, for a long time, and being from where we are, you know, it's not necessarily the coolest thing in the world to be a to be a rap fan. But uh, let's go let's go back a little bit. We kind of jumped the gun talking about the rap game. I posted on Facebook for people to ask you questions. We're going to get to... I think there's only like two questions that aren't related to this exact <laughs> thing I'm going to ask you about. But uh, let's talk about the fight videos. Now, I could be wrong, but for all my crew cast listeners, Tree Talk followers, I think it started with Cam's fight, did it not? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think... Mm. Shoot, it was either his or the Tammany fight with Kramas breaking it up. Oh, I think it was Cam's fight, dude. Because I, I think it was actually, yeah, at uh, Pioneer Park. I think it was. So, uh, how'd you get your hands on that? What made you want to post? Okay, well, the first like five fights I posted, um, I bidded myself, so I don't have to worry about. It. Just I got invited to do a fight. I'm gonna go. It's a fight. Okay, yeah. that's the, that, that's that's what happened in the first five fights. I'm gonna get invited to do a fight. Cool, I'm going to go watch. Okay, well, I got a phone. I want to watch it for later. I never in my head at the time that I think about posting it until I got home. I video the fight at the fight. When I'm at the fight, I video the fight. Um, cool. Just like, you know, there's a ton of people videoing it, but nobody had the idea to post it. You know, maybe a Snapchat story here or there. Yeah. Snapchat story here or there. And I mean, even back then, I was like 2016, so yeah. no one was really too much on Snapchat. Yet. Yeah. So, I get home. I'm showing my family. I'm like, hey, look what I just went and watched. Ha ha. I mean, I'm living with Connor Drew at the time because he's my stepbrother. Uh, so he's got his group of friends over, I got my group of friends over, it's two different, you know, high school ages, you know, so we kind of mesh together, our, our friend groups kind of meshed together, Yeah. so, as you kind of seen probably on the Super Bowl night, it was two different friend groups kind of meshed. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm sitting in my bed at home, it's getting a little late, uh, I'm like, I want more people to see this, like, there's a way that more people can see these fights, and I've had... Mind you, before this, I had the Sturgeon post and had a couple more posts that kind of got some traction. So I was kind of like craving that a little bit. Yeah. Claving, I was claving like, you know, I want this. I, I, liked, I liked that era of time where people were talking about me. So I'm going to try that again. Next morning, I'm like thinking about this, how I'm going to post it. I cropped the video. I trimmed the video. I get it just right. You know, I make the contrast a little better so people can see it better during school. And then um, I wait till prime time on Facebook. So prime time when you're posting something when everybody's off work but nobody's eating dinner yet or right after dinner and everybody's just kind of sitting there all fat and full and you know they're on their phone scrolling through facebook uh you post it at that time so everybody's gonna see it so they can interact interact with it and you can get that virus spreading uh well i just do i bite the bullet and i post the fight well i had never posted a fight before but this one was like a three minute fight, but it was pretty gnarly. Oh, dude. What the you things had, Cameron was you had saying. Cameron, the... You had Cameron smashing a guy over here, and then you had Eli headbutting a guy over there. People are going to want to see that. People are going to show people that. People want to talk about it. It's that common ground everybody has. Everybody likes watching fights, you know? Everybody. Yeah. If you're vegan, if you're feminist, whatever, people are, you know, you like watching fights. It's cool. It's entertaining. Um, so that gained traction and blew up, and. You know, I hadn't really had a ground at that time for around that video for Fight Kane, Fight Night Kane Tippet. I, that wasn't a thing yet because I just posted one fight. But I get invited to more fights, and the first one blew up. Why well, want the second one? Why well, want the third one? Why well, want the fourth one? So blew people up. were legitimately hitting you up yeah. to be like, "Please come and record this fight yes. and post it." There were, like, for example, John. I think it John Brashear and another one. Wasn't that Brady? 
Or was it not? It no, Nagy, Nagy Partita's brother. I don't know. Me neither. I don't know. I forgot his name. They organized it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that fight and Taron Smith versus Levi Munsterman. Those oh, two fights were purely no. done yeah. just for the Facebook video. Yeah. They only fought just for the Facebook video. I'm pretty sure. I know Taron's was for sure, but I, I think John's was. Taron didn't even. Taron came to that fight thinking that he was just going to watch it. Turns out the kid that was going to fight Levi didn't want to do it. He, or he didn't show up or something. Well, Taron got called a pussy. And so, Taron, I'm not a pussy. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> so they fight. Taron knocks him out in the second punch. There's a video. Everybody wants to watch that. That's, that's, that's not much more traction. You know, Taron got a little, little hyper on there at school because this was during school. So yeah, Taron yeah. goes to school the next day. I saw a video. You're knocking the kid out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got that taste of fame. Taron got the taste of fame. I got my name out there again. It's rinse and repeat at this point. At this point, it's just rinse and repeat. It's a huge snowball that's building up. I just got to think of more things to do. So, I did that until the fight phase faded out. Until the cops got involved. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I don't, are, we, are we able to talk about yeah. that? Are we able? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nothing happened about Nothing with that happened. So, um, before we get into, into that, uh, the Cameron fight really stood out to me because obviously, you know, Cameron's my boy. He's uh, my roommate now. Mm-hmm. Um... Can we just talk about how extra he was in that video? I don't even remember the fight, dude. dude. That kid was that kid's like born to be in front of a camera, or like born to like talk shit. Cause I just remember he's holding this kid down. He's like, "Say you're my bitch." <laughs> That's right. And he he's, did. Like, he's like, he's like, I'm a big bitch, big <laughs> pussy. Oh my god, I remember that now. Dude, just making him say that shit, and then and then he goes, "Put the camera on me." <sighs> Thank you, Cameron Cheers, for doing that because I'm sure that was solely 50% of why that video blew up. Yeah, no he's respo- Cameron Sears is responsible for 50% of my career after making him say that. <laughs> Holy, I just realized that. Right? Oh my god. <laughs> I forgot that he made Nathan say that. Yeah, that was very... When you when you kill someone's ego like that in three words, <sighs> everybody wants to see it. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. that yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. I just... And because, like, you know, we were all still friends at the time, and, you know, Cameron shares it to the group chat before he even posted, and we're like, damn, dude. <laughs> and then, like, I go on Facebook five minutes later, and it's posted mm-hmm. on there, and everybody's talking about it. And, uh, dude, like, it... <sighs> I could be overrating it, but I think it got close to a hundred thousand to like a million views. Like, I couldn't even comment on it. I don't. Even, I don't even remember what it was at. It well, definitely he, blew up, though. Cameron told me he had people from like Virginia and like Tennessee oh, yeah. reaching out to him. Oh yeah, like people from everywhere. And I and this could be wrong. It could be because Cameron likes to talk his shit. Mm. And I don't know. I don't know a hundred percent sure. According to the video, you can back it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah no no kid- one's stopping it. Yeah, no kidding. But um, I don't know how true this part is, but apparently World Star got it. Can you can you vouch for that? I don't know. But if they did, I didn't see it or make a mental note of it. Don't I'm, know. I'm pretty sure it did because I remember seeing it on World Star, and it'd be weird if it was there and they didn't reach out to you because like the reason I knew it was yeah. on World Star is because I think I seen it on Twitter instead of Facebook. Well, I mean, I mean, if that if that would have happened. It could, I mean, I don't think Worldstar would be getting their videos off Facebook. Yeah. I think that, if anything, Twitter would be the bigger social media right now. I mean, I think more people use Facebook, but, like, you know, with our age group, I'd say Twitter's a little bit bigger mm-hmm. right now. Maybe back then Facebook is bigger, but, you know, 70-year-olds use Facebook. Come on. Yeah. More than we do. People are using Twitter. So I would I would imagine it would have gotten noticed on Twitter versus Facebook, but... I mean, that'd have been cool if World Star visited my Facebook page. That'd be pretty gnarly. But well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they did because I mean, I don't know how else they get the video unless Cam submitted it. But I guess we're gonna have to uh, ask Cam when he gets back. But yeah. Um. So yeah, the, I I remember too the the underground fight club of the Lewis Clark Valley, bro. That was big news. Wow. We were what sophomores, juniors? We weren't seniors. The fights? Yeah. We were seniors. Were we really? Yeah, because I was at Tammany, and. You know, at the Tammany fight, I videoed the fight at Tammany when they were fighting in the hall, and the principal got involved in the middle of the fight. I videoed that, I got suspended two days for it. Same amount of time that these kids that actually fought got suspended for. I got suspended for the same time. Well, you can't. <laughs> you ended up coming back to LHS. Though, yeah, yeah. So on. that's yeah. how I know it was senior year because middle of the year when I got put in English with you, um, I went from Tammany to LHS middle of the year, and this was in the middle of the fight club phase, like dead smack in the middle of the video phase. So it was kind of cool because, like, when I didn't go to LHS for that first semester of senior year, when I came back for that first day, everybody was looking at me like I died. Like, where did you go? Like, I see you everywhere online, but where did you go? Like, nobody at, like nobody messaged me asking what happened. But, like, when I got to school, 
like Kataya was the first person that ever said anything. He's like, I didn't even know you were still alive. Like, I don't know. Going to that school just kind of deadened it a little bit, but I mean, it got me that content. So, um, let's talk about that. So it was it was a year before I started working at the news station, but I remember seeing the news. It was on the news that yeah. there might have been like some Fight Club going on in the valley. So what? I guess what was asked of you, and like how did you handle that situation? So the um, the newspaper article and then the KLEW segment was done after Terrence fight at McGee. Once cops figured out that was on school property, um, is when they were like, oh, okay, we need to stop this. Obviously, it's only being posted to one page, and there's obviously one kid that's in the know of everything that's happening, so we need to nip that in the bud what we can. Um, so, this is, again, this is after I moved back to LHS. So, I start getting, I start, I, I post more videos, you know, I'm getting more of those tokens I'm talking about. I keep posting more videos, it's getting more and more controversial. So, I posted one in Julieta. Okay, I'm not living in Julieta, but I posted a video that I didn't take. I think Hunter Jones took it. Um, he took a video of two, like, ninth grade girls fighting at an elementary school. It was clearly bullying. This girl was, like, clearly, like, bullying this girl. And, like, I didn't know at the time, but I still posted it. But I didn't know what was, like, I didn't know the details behind it. I didn't know what they were doing, why they were doing it, nothing. I just posted it because it's a fight. But this was clearly bullying, so... <laughs> that video I think got like 40,000 views um, but sent like it was so obviously bullying moms and parents were just mad yeah. mad lads <laughs> mad lads yeah. so this this is when I start getting pulled out of cl middle of class middle of class I'm like in Daughtry's Daughtry's government I think yeah I'm sitting there in class cops walk in the classroom pull me out <laughs> pull me out what's that feeling like it's, did you know what it was right off the bat the first time, no. Oh. First time, no. I thought I was just gone, for some <laughs> for some different. I I thought I don't know. Once it happened the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, yeah, I knew it was happening. I was like, okay, <laughs> just start walking. But the first time, I was a little, I was a little scared. But they start pulling me out of class to take me to Driscoll's office with Arlen and Massey. FYI, Massey is totally on board with everything. Massey was so pumped for it. He's like, kids are going to fight regardless. All he's doing is showing me that it's happening. Like, like it's building awareness. Sort like of. kids are going to fight. The only, you just are mad because your kids get beat up. That's it. That's it. That's wild. Yeah. But Massey didn't say that in front of them. He told me that personally. Like yeah. he's like he vouched for it. Not that was that was awesome. But Driscoll, I feel like Driscoll and Arlen were like not mad about it, but they knew it shouldn't be happening. But I think as like a guy, they just kind of like it's a fight. We want to kind of want to watch it too. So yeah. we showed them all the videos. They come. They had little comments on it, like that kid should have ducked and thrown a jab that way. So they had their little nitpicks about it. They they had to like speak professionally, you know. Cops in the room as well. The last time I got pulled out was actually by FBI. <laughs> they didn't actually pull me out of class. They were in the um. I just got I just got a little note sent to me saying you need to go to Driscoll's office. Okay, I'm like whatever. This is like ten times this has happened. So I go to the office, and there's two dudes in suits sitting there. I'm like, okay, this is different. <laughs> this, yeah. these aren't your regular cops. Well, they introduce themselves as, like, Trevor, Hale, and Joseph. I forgot the Joseph's last name, but there are two local FBI agents because every county or city or something has, like, dedicated FBI. Um, they sit me down. They talk to me about it just the same way the cops did, and they wanted to know about it. Um, I tell them about it, but they – you can't really – I mean, I'm just posting fights that – it's not, there's nothing illegal about it, so they couldn't they couldn't capitalize on anything. They couldn't stop it. Um, the fight on the school property was okay because it wasn't between 7:30 and 4:30. It was just it was just since it's not in those hours, they said it was just fine. They couldn't school couldn't do anything about it. Um, they just questioned me, deducted that there was nothing that they could do about it, and asked me to stop. Um, and I posted a couple more, and I think I did stop because. There was, like, Virginia, like, superintendents that were calling my parents. Like, my dad was getting calls from superintendents, like, <laughs> questioning him about it. But, and, again, my parents were totally on board, too, which is very nice. Yeah. I was super cool that my dad was super on board with that. <laughs> but. He's a man that's been through a lot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so we're 43 minutes into this podcast. We're going to take a quick little break here, and then we're going to we're gonna put Kane in the hot seat a little bit, really kind of discover if he's a actually a real person or not if those stories did not convince you you're listening to the <laughs> tree talks with podcast
All right, we're back. And again, we are looking for sponsors of the Troop Talks with Podcast and Troop Talks in general. If you are interested, make sure you can email me at trevanp at gmail.com, T-R-E-V-A-N-P at gmail.com. You're a tech-savvy guy. Why do I have all these pop-ups popping up from a streaming service from Reddit? Is that well, who do you, do you know, do you know the background of those like are these like actual people that are streaming games or is it like a like a bot service do you know anything about that? Oh man, someone's got to run it, right? Yeah. So like, I mean, someone's obviously behind it, but I think at a, at a certain point it'll turn into a bot. Like when somebody like gets it so perfectly where they have you know the HD quality, they're making sure it's not lagging for the people, then they can turn it into a bot and the, the bot will do it for them. But obviously, and then you got the risk of website being taken down which a lot of reddit sites do and reddit actually banned streams yeah so you have to find your own third party you know streaming site to do it but once you click that a lot of ads then that website's getting paid for to run ads so they're going to run ads and you're going to feel them well like i was just telling kane before the started because we're doing a countdown before the podcast starts and right at one i get these pop-ups so like on my laptop bro i got like so many random pop-ups, like, I remember when I was dating my ex-girlfriend at the time, freaking, uh, I'd get this pop-up, be like, Anna sent you 27 new messages, popped up <laughs> on my laptop, and this chick is obviously fake, she's like a fucking model, and, yeah. and I come home from work, she's pissed, I'm like, what's up, she's like, who's Anna, I'm like, Anna, I don't fucking know who Anna is, and she's like, she sent you 27 pictures that was on your laptop, and I'm like, I'm like, I hope you didn't click that, because I don't want to get a virus on my computer, I was yep. like, I was like, those are just freaking ads, I get ads for like Bitcoin, mm -hmm. mostly popular, like, Anna sent you 27 messages, mm -hmm. <laughs> my favorite one is when I get one of those, and it just says, hey buddy on there, it's like, so, a, so that ad's probably like a dating website's ad, Yeah. so like, Match.com probably paid or has like a venture to sell ads to you know little websites here and there that'll run Anna's 27 messages on people's computers, innocent people's computers, because they're paying companies like that to do it. <laughs> probably what happened, but um, yeah. All right, so we're gonna play a game with Kane. I think uh, one thing I want to give you props on for this too is you are a very well-spoken man. I thought you were just you know a guy that typed on the internet. And, you know, didn't speak much, but you are actually uh, very well spoken. Thank you. I don't I think it's just learned. Learned trait. Yeah, learned trait. You've done a podcast before? Never. Never? Never. I'm, I'm really excited that you were my first <clears> guest. <throat> I'm excited, too, that you were like, you didn't even think about it. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Was, was, another was, token. <laughs> yeah, it's another token. <laughs> and I'm hoping you share it on your Facebook, too, so Troop Talks get some tokens, because we've been grinding out here for a while now. Yeah. But, um, all right, we're going to play a game called Plead the Fifth. So, a lot of people aren't sure who Kane really is. A lot of people aren't sure what Kane really is. So, I'm going to ask him a lot of hard hitting questions, and he only gets one plead the fifth for these questions. So, are you ready to be honest? Yeah. All right. Okay, so we went to a Coeur d'Alene trip, and uh, the ending of it, we've talked about it in a couple of podcasts when Treb had three seizures. That, mm -hmm. wasn't, that wasn't the best time. Pretty gnarly. Now,. My first question about that weekend is, did you help at all, or were you just standing in the background okay. the whole time? <laughs> okay, to be fair, I did not help at all. <laughs> but, to be fair, you, you molly whopped me in the head. Did I really? When you fell off the couch, because I was sleeping right under you, right? So, like, I slept right to the side of the couch, but at night, I moved. I moved, like, in close enough to you to where when you roll off the bed, because, like, you were awake before. I don't know if I told you that, but, like, Josh had walked inside... And you were awake. You, like, sat up and you looked at them. And then you rolled back down. And then 30 seconds later, you rolled up to bed and that happened. But as you were rolling, your foot came down and just clocked my forehead. <laughs> just clocked me. So, I mean, that, I was like, okay, I, obviously I can't really think of anything like that. Because you had no you know, choice between that. But, um, there were, before I'd even, like, taken my cover off to, like, know what was going on, Taren was already on top of you. Oh, was he? Well, Taren had, like, Taren was asleep, too. Taren had already... Woken up, came to a senses, got on top of you, had you in a position, like, cause he's EMT certified. Yeah. You know, and Shay has seizures too, so, like, he knows what to do in this situation. He was already on top of you, knowing what to do. So, by the time I had even came to, like, he was already, he had already had it settled, and every time you had one, uh, Colton was, was right next to you, Taryn was right next to you, and then I, I, somebody else was next to you too, I think Austin. They had you situated the whole time, so it's like I had no place to go in there and I get you. move them around to help you, but... <laughs> 
Yeah, I get you. I get you. And, okay, um, were you pissed off at first when I kicked you? Were you confused? No. no I you... didn't know what happened. Oh. Because, like, right, I mean, right after that, what really woke me up, really, yeah. I thought someone just kind of kicked me as we were walking by. I wasn't going wasn't gonna to open my coverage for that because it was you know, kind of cold in the living room. You smacked the table. You smacked the table, and when you did that, everybody woke up. Like, I don't know how you didn't break your wrist or whatever hit, dude. You smacked that table, and everything jumped up a foot. Everything on that table jumped up, but that was just from you falling. So that's really what kind of woke me up. I'm sure that's what woke me up too. That's <laughs> wild, dude. Because you know people talk about these seizures I have, and I don't even I have yeah. no recollection of them. <clears throat> like I don't ever even I don't even think what was uh. So I know you go through Shay's seizures too. Are are hers common? Like, did she have those she often? Had, she's had two. This she had two. She had one at the beginning of February, one at the end of January, and then one back in October. Um, she had an EEG done. Mm-hmm. If you know what that is. Yeah, yeah, I've had one done. Yeah. What did you have to? Did you have to stay up 24 hours? Yeah. Okay. She did two. Yeah. 22 hours into her 24 hour adventure, she had one. This is her first one that she's had while awake, though. So, um, I'm sitting there playing a game. I turn around, or I don't turn around yet because she doesn't, I didn't know what was happening. She was playing on her phone and she's like, Kane. And I turn around real quick because we're like, I'm, we're so tired, dude. But I have to stay awake because I'm playing video games. Yeah. I turn around, she starts crying. And she's like, it's happening. And I'm like, well, what's happening? I throw my headset off. I hop out of the chair. I start running to her. And she's just like, starts twisting like this. Her whole body is just twisting to the left. Yeah. And, you know, just usual things you do because your body's losing control. Um, for how I was going with this, but that happened probably a week and a half ago, but she, yeah, she, right before the EEG test, she has her seizure, she was supposed to go into the hospital at 6.30 a.m., had one at 4.30 a.m., but, like, what you were saying with not knowing what was happening during or after, um, probably 10 minutes after she had that one, when I was waiting for her to be able to walk, you know, so we can walk to my car and stuff, um, she looked at me and just, like, disgust, and was looking at my tattoos, and was like, what is that, like, didn't know I had them. Like, was I have a video of her on my phone just looking at my neck and my hands and was like, what are these? When did you get these? What is that M on your neck? What is that? What is that? Like, just didn't know I had tattoos. It was the scariest thing. I thought she went brain dead for a second. I was like, Damn. what is happening? She came too, obviously, but it is scary stuff, dude. Uh, how, <laughs> I, and just, I don't know, because, like, now we're getting into seizure talks, but how similar was hers to mine? Or were they Same completely, thing. Really? Same exact thing. Same length, everything. Obviously, you had three at once. Hers is not that severe. I mean, it could have just been something combination of chemicals like Amon, you know, she yeah. have, haven't found her trigger yet. But, I haven't either. Um, obviously, so their triggers are unknown and probably do way different things. We're thinking hers is a lack of sleep because, again, she had one 22 hours into her 24 venture. So, and, I mean, <clears throat> but. Yeah, see, cause, like, I don't even, the only thing I remember specifically from that was when Taryn was like, you just had a seizure, okay? And I'm like, fuck. You remember that? I just, that's the only thing I remember. Like, I don't, I remember you called my girlfriend at the time, and I don't even remember talking to her. Well, I mean, in the middle of that conversation, you had one. Yeah, I don't so, even like, remember. So, like, you're on the phone, and then the same thing Shay did. You just, start, you just started rolling back. <laughs> you just rolled back, and you had, like, this. Someone caught the phone out of your hand, and then you just had another one. That was, dude, that was so crazy. That was an eventful morning, because we'd said it to, like, 5 in the morning night yeah. before, too. So, <laughs> I, no, man, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not like I made the best decisions the night before. I feel, I feel like I've, I've kind of, I've, I've figured out kind of what my seizure deals are. Uh, obviously, don't eat what I ate that night, yeah. and uh, dab pens. You'd be surprised, dude. Like those THC cartridges, dude, man. Any concentrated chemical that your brain is taking in is going to have some kind of effect, and everybody's different. So, you know. One person can have a seizure from just the simple chemical in, like, cat litter. Yeah. And then someone can have it from, you know, even, like, just a hardcore drug that nobody ever takes, but somebody did one time and they had a seizure from, you know? It's like, you gotta you gotta figure it out what it is first, but everybody's different, so gotta figure it out. Well, yeah, it was a dab cartridge, so I haven't, I haven't smoked weed in, like, two months, two, three months now, and uh, I haven't had a seizure in three months either, so that's... Uh... Very that's coincidental. Good. Yeah, so that's that's been when I was I was I was getting scared and had to drop the nicotine, dude. That would have been way harder to quit because you know I hate I hate thinking the fact that it's weed causing that, and I don't want to concentrate think that. part of yeah, it. Yeah, I was gonna yeah because like you know the actual plant versus you know a man made like you're like 
I never even had a good opinion on dabs either. Like, if you're gonna just dab, just sm start smoking crack. You already have crackhead <laughs> tendencies. Yeah. Why are you, like, why? I don't know. It's like wanting to vape 50 Nick versus just doing 25. Like, if you just set your tolerance level to that 25, it's gonna have the same effect as a 50. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to, like, put that much more chemicals in your head? I don't get it, but people do what they do. Bad comes out. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I think, like, a big part of, like, me wanting to get better was the bills. You know, oh, like, yeah. getting those getting those bills often, you know, and, like, still, and still, like, like getting, like, a collections notice for a bill that you totally forgot you even had because you have so many of them yeah. that you just forget you even have them. So, like, I, that was a big part is, like, I need to get myself healthy. And then, like, not driving. Not driving. Like, I would imagine it's a paralyzed dude. Dude, that's that's one of the, <clears throat> the biggest things. That's why I can't, you know, really understand how people just go, like, a long time without even getting their license. You know, I couldn't imagine not being able to drive, dude. That freedom. It's a whole other freedom. You can do what you want. Yeah. Especially after the age of 18. Like, <laughs> like why would not Why would you not want to at least have your license? I mean, I get not being able to get a car, but, like, it's just the fact that you can drive the car, you know? Mm-hmm. You do that freedom. So, okay, my next question, because we got a little off track there for that uh, the, that talk. My next played the fifth question, same night. I went to the bathroom you were gone. Typical cane... Typical Kane uh, situation where Kane just disappears, dissipates. Colton has a story that you said you were going to get ice cream at multiple different locations at like 11 o'clock at night. What were okay. you doing? I have a whole complete good explanation. All right. So when we got back from the hockey game, <clears throat> I had the idea, okay, because I'm not going to go to bed. I just drove to Coeur d'Alene, you know, not five hours before, Okay. I'm not going to come to Coeur d'Alene just to go to bed at 11 p.m. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. I thought everybody else was going to bed. I saw Mike go to his room, and I'm pretty sure, I, th I swear to God he went to bed. But apparently he came out a couple hours later or whatever. I don't know. Um, I thought you went into the room adjacent of Mike's room. I thought you were sleeping there. I don't know. I was thinking everybody went to bed, and I completely forgot that there was a truck full of people <laughs> coming in turns right behind us. So um, I'm like, okay, everybody's going to bed. Cool. I'm not going to bed. I just came to Coeur d'Alene for, no, for no reason. I'm going to go do stuff. Um... So I Googled, and Colton was actually hadn't gone to bed yet, but he was laying down on the couch. Okay? Yeah. Colton's laying on the couch, putting a blanket on himself. That solidifies me thinking everybody's going to bed. Okay, that's yeah. so that's that's what I'm thinking at this moment. I want someone to know where I'm going. Colton, yeah. I'm going to get ice cream at a McDonald's, and that's all I told him. Not multiple locations. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I just said I was going to get ice cream. Okay, yeah. I did. Got, I, I actually did get ice cream multiple locations though. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> I found a. <sighs> I'm driving because Mike lives near the freeway, a freeway-ish. I'm not. It was dark, so I'm not really sure if I was freeway or not. But it was a huge street, like five lanes. Um, I say St. Regis on the side, 24 hours. Okay, there was a bar there too. Um, the bars closed at 2 a.m., so I was able to go there till 2 a.m. And then they had the lounge that was open for 24 hours. So everybody that was at the bar, just kind of moved to the lounge. It was couches, it was TVs and stuff on there. It was cool. Uh, hung out there. Talking to two guys, one guy was a homeless dude, and one guy was a veteran. <laughs> they stuck by me the whole night, which is weird. It felt very human trafficky. Really? It was weird how like, like they stuck next to me. It was weird. It was scary, but um, talked to them the whole night. Left, came back. We all were still awake. He had a new guest there actually. Justin Shandrick was there. Um, yeah. Some people were asleep, uh, but we hung out there for a couple hours after I got back. Got questioned by every single person. <laughs> got questioned by everybody, but. After I left St. Regis, I went and got ice cream again, which is when I came. Taryn asked me for McDonald's, too, so I, once I left to getting ice cream, I had to come back around to get him food, so it kind of prolonged that trip, but um, kind of hung out with you guys after I got back, but fair <laughs> enough. not pleading the fifth on that one. <laughs> fair enough. Okay, so my next question is something that we also ventured to in that quarter lane trip, but it's, uh, it's more of a broad question. You're a guy that's been on the dark web, mm -hmm. the deep web. Have you ever bought anything off the dark web? It's too scary. Um, so let's say you buy a drug. Okay, the, I'm not... Dark web's a dark web. I've been over the fact that you can buy anything on the dark web. Literally anything you can think of. <clears throat> Whether it be exotic animals or... <laughs> you remember we were talking about that? Yeah. And you're, like, you're like, you can buy anything you want. I'm like, could you buy a zebra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Um... People, people forget how easy it is to actually get on the dark web. It's literally two app installs on your phone, and you're on the dark web. <laughs> if finding the links to get to the websites, and it's not your, it's not your normal kind of link. Like, the links, like, 
Okay, so you go to Google. Everybody knows it's Google.com, right? Yeah. Well, a link to let's say if you wanted to go to Google on to, on dark web, it's not going to be Google. Like the closest thing you're going to get to a link to Google on the dark web is if you go on your keyboard and you smash every button you see because it's every key on your keyboard randomly mixed up, and then dot onion. That's how you get to a website. Well, you have to go to your regular browser to look up these websites, the links to these websites, and then you have to copy and paste into your Tor browser, which is the dark web browser. And then it takes a long time to load because you have so many VPNs running, which is a virtual private network, so no one can see where you're at. So you can stay safe because it's not legal being on the dark web. Like, it's legal being on the dark web on the browser, but until you get to a website, that's when it becomes illegal. So you can go to legal websites like Google, you can do normal internet stuff, but the second you go to, like, Pink Road or the Silk Road, where you sell drugs, you buy exotic animals, you buy human humans... <laughs> then that's when it gets illegal. But um, people forget how easy it is, and never going to buy something off that website because let's say let's say I got ballsy one day and bought a bunch of drugs that I think I can flip. Okay, I buy a package and I don't know that it was on a tracked website, and the cops just follow the package to my house, and I get hit with a felony and years in prison because I wanted to buy something. I'm not going to risk that. <laughs> Not doing it. Have you ever done anything sketchy on the dark web, or have you ever been to a sketchy website? Oh yeah, I've I've looked up my fair share of highly illegal stuff. Like I've wanted, to, I've pushed the boundaries of the dark web before. I wanted to see really what was on there. Nothing like nothing like like disgusting, you know, like nothing like gory or anything like yeah, just drugs and like animal stuff like that. But like I'm talking like. <laughs> like you're going to Costco to buy drugs types of websites. Like you're buying in bulk. Like it's just scary looking at like Nigerian warlord prince blood diamond stuff. It's crazy. Um, <clears throat> have you ever been in any chat rooms on dark web? No, never found one of those. No, that Which I wouldn't imagine that'd be terrifying. Oh my gosh. Well, like some of the dark web stories I see like on YouTube and stuff seem fake. They don't. They don't seem real. Like. I'm sure there's a handful, give or take, that are, you know, real and fake, just for the YouTube clout, but, like... Well, I mean, I go on YouTube, and there's this guy I watch, his name's, like, Crypto NWO, and he, like, does dark box, dark, dark web mystery box unboxings, and I know that shit's fake, because, like, he'll have, like, he'll, like, he'll, like, open it, and there'll be, like, a flash drive, or, like, a DVD of some dude outside of his house, and he's totally not even reacting. <laughs> he's like, oh my god, that's my house! Yeah, no, I would, I'd die right then and there, I wouldn't, I'd move. Yeah, I would. You'd no, have to. You. Yeah, seriously. If that was real, but no, that just sounds like a YouTube token he's trying to get. Yeah, man, I thought I was gonna fucking have more hard hitting questions for you, but I mean, I don't really have much. I just have some questions because you know you're a. Uh... Um, how many people a day hit you up to try and sell like? Because po- I remember that was another phase of your shit, like post like their sell vapes. Stuff? Yeah, like sell stuff. Uh, a lot. That was probably the worst phase of, of anything. A lot, like. <laughs> out of tens of twenties of thirties of just unopened snapchats because I knew like I'm not going to open it because I know that it's going to ask me just to sell something for them I mean I you know you're getting thousands of views in your snapchat story you know a lot of people in the valley are seeing them plus when everybody's out yeah like when you posted that picture of me puking outside the bar on my 21st birthday <laughs> I didn't cloudy, t- though. Kinda I- cloudy though huh? <laughs> it's kind of cloudy though you gotta post the 21st come on I know I know I, pre- <laughs> I, I agree with that but dude I'm telling you this I went to hot shots it's a coffee place here. This girl comes to me. She says, give me a coffee. She's like, I've seen you before. And I'm, like, I'm like, where? And she's like, oh, you were the kid on Kane's Snapchat that was puking. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> it was a day, a day after my birthday. I go on That's my hilarious. Snapchat and I see it on there. I'm like, Kane, you bastard. But I mean, it was it was hilarious. But yeah. what's, what's, so it's mostly vapes from what I see. It's mostly vapes. When I was doing that, yeah, because everybody, everybody vapes. And even if they don't now, they did then. Like when vapes were a thing. Like, when they first blew up, when, it, when when mods were turning into salt mix, and when that, like, six-month era, when mods turned into salt mix, when the vape was the highest in the, like, here in the, you know, local area, mm-hmm. you know, in the boundary, boundaries of my Snapchat story, um, <clears throat> everybody did it. Everybody wanted one. So, it was just an opportunity to make money. You know, I can go buy a... So, did you charge people to post it for you? No, oh. I didn't. <laughs> oh. I could, I probably could have, but, I mean... You just wanted, they just wanted more eyes on it is what they wanted. Really. Yeah, and plus it was something like, it was just another publicity thing, like, hey, this can, this candle poster vape, Adam. You yeah. know, this is another ad, just another follow, just another view. Mm-hmm. 
it's not publicity. I'm not. I don't think I'm at the level of anything to be charging people to do stuff. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, what's a weird? Is there any weird things that people have asked you to sell before? Uh, taser. I think I got asked like, to sell a taser once. I think. Yeah. I think Jeff Costa actually. Jared Costa's oh, brother dear. messaged me uh, to sell him a taser. To sell a taser for him, I think. But that'd be the weirdest that I can think off the top of my head. <laughs> I think Mike asked me to sell a sex tape once too. Well, yeah. But and I'd imagine some thing. people would buy it. You yeah. know. You know. All right. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll have a pic. We'll have a picture up. We're gonna have to take like a picture together after this podcast <clears throat> is over or something. But uh, we'll have a picture of Kane on there. You have some. You have some tattoos. Yeah. Um, I I feel like a lot of your tattoos is kind of inspired by the music you listen to. Am I wrong by that? Um. Mm, like in the places that they're put. Yeah. Okay. Yes and no. Okay, so I'm not gonna get any tattoos on my actual face. I have them on my neck. Yeah. But that's because it's the highest you can go, really, before it's a face tat. Yeah. And I know that our society is changing to the point where people don't, you know, all the old people are dying. So <laughs> yeah, it's not like they're right. not going to view our tattoos as, like, just disgusting anymore. Our age group is getting older, and everybody's becoming more open with how liberal effort is becoming. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Like, being open to more things, to me, is being more liberal. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I don't, I just don't see a downside of it, and I like them first off. Just because, you know, everybody sees them, they're all in the open. Every single one I have says something, and then just people are just open about it. <laughs> I joked at first when I got these tattoos that I just wanted, I just made Denied it so I didn't want to have a job. Yeah. I just wanted to make that. it so my career couldn't advance. That's a joke, because it's never stopped my career in any bit at all. I've always had, you know, top-notch jobs of my, of my field that I want to work in, you know. Same here, yeah. Building computers for a living, so it's, that's always what I wanted to do, and I'm finally there, so I can't really get any lower. You know, when yeah. I when I can go to a shop and be like, hey, I can build this computer better than you can, and they look at me with tattoos, but I still did the job. They're going to look past my tattoos and look at me for my value, exactly. which is exactly what my last job did because that's exactly what they told me. And, I mean, they had tattoos as well. My boss had tattoos everywhere, so it's like it wasn't an issue in the first place, but it's not negatively affecting my life at all, so I don't care. I don't care what people are thinking about them, <clears throat> and if it's not negatively affecting me, I do, do not care. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to... Keep adding to them. I don't know. Okay, and now I'm going to ask the meaning of them. So, this one that you have, like, on the... not. Uh, let's start off with this one. The one that's, like, on the back of your hand. I can't even tell what that is, to be honest. It's like so. a tessalized bear head. Um, my cousin Bradley went to the Air Force when I was, like, a junior because he's two years ahead of me in school. So, he's been gone in Japan for, like, three years. Haven't seen the dude. Talked to him all the time, though. Very close to him when I was a kid. He's my cousin. My mom's sister's son. Okay, straight up first blood cousin. Haven't seen him forever, but I seen that he drew one of these. And he drew this bear on a piece of paper, and it was just this, exactly this. So I was like, that's actually really cool. And I haven't seen you forever. You are a huge part of my life. Why not dedicate something for you? So it's like, here, here's this. And um, got it done. Um, okay, let's go. Let's move on to the, your fingers. So you got multiple different symbols. Fingers? These were a, uh, I'm 18, I'm going to rebel. <laughs> <laughs> there's not too much meaning. With, these are the only ones without meaning. I mean, there's basic ones. Like, I got the clover right here. I'm redhead. So, yeah. and then you got Chinese as my name. You got Z's from music. And then you got sevens because seven's my favorite number. always has been. Mm-hmm. I always had seven on my jersey whenever I was playing sports. So, um, it was just kind of an 18, I'm going to rebel. Yeah. And then I got I actually got a tribal tattoo right here with Taryn. Yeah. The same day, the same day I got these finger tats. Um these are kind of just like a matching friend tattoo on her chest here, but um Is that what the clover behind your ear is too for like being redhead? Yeah, same same exact meaning. Just I had this Virgo symbol behind my left ear, which is Virgo, it's not Scorpio. Everybody asks if it's Scorpio, it's Virgo. Um I had this behind this ear right here already, and I was like, There's nothing right here and I hadn't had this yet. Yeah. So there needs to be a balance, a yin-yang balance. So I got one right here about the same size. Now there's something to look out on any direction someone's looking at me. And the cardinal. That's the cardinal, right? Yeah. yeah. So my grandma my great-grandma was also very close to her. She was like 86 when she passed away. And dates out there at 2012, I think. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, oh, I didn't even see those dates at yeah. first. Yeah. So Sean Bake did this. Uh, 
She was very close to me, so but she had cardinals all over her house. Her house was decked down car- cardinals, so she had coasters, just cardinals, you know. Yeah. She had table table mats, like tablecloths, cardinals, um, sofa like wraps, like she would put a wrap over her sofa when she wasn't sitting on it, decked down <laughs> cardinals. She had cardinal like just I can imagine. So she just lived and breathed cardinals. So uh, when she passed away. Obviously, in 2012, I was like 13, 12, 13, and I couldn't get a neck tattoo at that age. Yeah. So I didn't. I waited until I was 20, I think, 2021. Um, obviously, I'm going to get the cardinal because that's all she, you know, did. And then cardinal sitting on the branch with her birth and death. And it was just kind of, you know, another kind of memorial. So. Did those hurt when they healed? Or, like, was it hard when they were healing and you had to, like, work around Only them? one that hurt. Only tattoo that hurt was this one, the chest one. Really? I wanted to cry. <laughs> I think I had tears in my eyes. They hurt so bad. <laughs> It hurt so bad. Couldn't imagine doing that again. <laughs> All right, so we are about an hour and 25 minutes into this podcast. I appreciate you for coming on, Kane. It's always a good time to sit and talk to you, bro. Do you have any uh, last words and maybe some advice for some people that <clears throat> want to become clout gods of the internet? Just chase a token. Don't chase a bag. Quit your job. Just chase a token. <laughs> <laughs> chase a token. Seriously. Don't chase the bag. Uh, anything else you want to say to the people before you peace out? Find common ground. Find That's all you gotta ground. do. Find common ground and your career is instantly boosted. Plus 10% right there. Once you find common ground. Alright, Kane, I appreciate you for having... I appreciate you for coming onto the podcast. And uh, hopefully this blows up because, you know, hopefully you, use some, hopefully you give me a token. I know you got enough tokens <laughs> to share around. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Tree Talks with podcast. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Uh, you can go ahead and follow me on Facebook, like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. You got any social medias you'd like to link in? I think everybody's got them. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this podcast. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Just trying to get that eighth badge. Eighth badge. Flamethrower. How we blaze tracks. Straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach. Maybach. Speed racer on that racetrack. Racetrack. I'm just trying to get that eighth badge. Eighth badge. Flamethrower. How we blaze tracks. Straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach. Maybach. Speed racer on that racetrack. Racetrack.